Next, next question. What's next for this mayor and council? I mean, what are what are some of the key things that um, uh, you know really are, are going to you know be on the agenda? Things that the next uh, that the mayor and the council are going to have to be uh, be dealing with over the uh, the next uh, few months here. Let's uh, jump into that, Gina. What would, uh, what would you say? It's really sort of the you know the first steps that they have to have to yeah. take. Uh, you know what, in all honesty, I think for Bowman, he's just going to have to figure out what the hell happens in council during the day. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is, uh, is going to be a new thing for him. Um, so I think that's going to be a big leap. I'm going to be sort of licking my chops thinking about, you know, as being a, uh, a rapid transit uh, advocate for many years, I'm, I'm kind of waiting to see what he's going to do. Uh, you know, he promised a lot here, billions of dollars. Nobody's made those kinds of promises. I'm seeing what he's going to deliver because I'm going to be holding you know him to account for that. Uh, a lot of young folks were really behind the idea that he was going to create a, a rapid transit plan for Winnipeg to end this endless debate that's been going on since we you know tore out the streetcar lines and uh, and debated this endless debate along the uh, southwest corridor. So I'm curious to see how he plans to steer that through council and get them to back uh, billions of dollars in uh, investment. I'm hoping to see it, but. I will retire before we finish probably that first leg. And I'm 15, 20 years away. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's interesting that, I mean, you know, well, uh, the, the can I mean, candidates are sort of elected for four years, but I mean, there's a, you know, there's a plan. I mean, there's a promise here to do, yeah, 16, six lines in the next 16 years. How is, he, how is that going to happen? Or I guess five, I guess. I mean, one's kind of, well, we got half of one so far. It's kind so of, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of in, in, in progress. Um, Royce, what are your thoughts? I mean, what, what do you think is, uh, next year for the council. Well, it'll be interesting to see. I, I think most people agree that this council is probably more tilted leftward than the last council. It's hard to say these things definitively. It's not totally easy to label some of these uh, candidates. And that doesn't bode well for Bowman in, uh, in all things. But there's two possibilities here. I think that uh, it'll be a honeymoon for Bowman in which the council is not going to give him such a rough time. Uh, the other possibility is that the council will immediately and strongly assert themselves against the mayor. Uh, and we see this in, in municipal systems like Winnipeg. So the one that I got to see up close was Sam Sullivan. As soon as he became mayor, he realized that uh, he couldn't do much without support on council. He kept losing votes right out of the gate as soon as he got elected. I think that the fact that he almost got a majority of votes in this race gives him uh, a fairly nice uh, honeymoon. I think they're going to uh, be nice to him for a while, but eventually that's going to come to an end, and it may come to an end pretty sooner than we think, too. But but do you think, you know, sort of, I guess, maybe sort of a counterpoint to that, do you think the fact that he has never held elected office before, um, you know, he's, he's sort of, he's going to be the learning curve is going to be fairly steep, you know, do you think that, you know, coming in, and, and yes, he has, a, he has a strong mandate, but in terms of, um, you know, running things, I mean, do you think that he's going to end up uh, having, you know, there, there might be potentially be some speed bumps or some things where people might go, you know what, I think we can really, uh, you know, I think we can really twist this guy's arm because we don't know what, you know, he doesn't know sort of the way of line necessarily. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a, a very strong possibility. An awful lot of incumbents were re-elected uh, last night on council, so that's a real possibility. There's already potentially blood in the water for Bowman. Maybe a harsh. <laughs> What, what, what would you say is next, Mary Agnes? Um, when I saw this question, I, the actual answer to it is everything. The amount of stuff that Bowman has to do, and not just setting his own campaign pledges aside, the amount of stuff he has to do at City Hall is, is actually overwhelming. I have never, I can think of, even a, yeah, I've never seen somebody inherit a, a, a government that is in as much disarray as I think City Hall is right now. He has, he's going to have to hire, fire, demote, promote, like nearly every senior staffer um, in City Hall. There are people in senior positions who really ought not to be in them currently. Um, and there's people that are retiring left and right and center, decent people that have jobs to fill. CAO is the obvious one. Hiring a CAO is not an easy thing. Um, you know, there's, there's uh, morale is terrible. Um, Planners have left, good staff have left, engineers have left. Um, it's it, it it really is you know except maybe for Devon Clunas like there's there's not a lot of talent left at City Hall right now I think unfortunately um, and and then there's things like the federal infrastructure fund needs to be negotiated that's like a billion dollars worth of projects that need to be agreed to he's never done those kind of negotiations um, God forbid we have another winter like the one we had. 
Uh, like it's just, it's, it's actually the amount of just structural stuff, daily city hall stuff, uh, just uh, separate and apart from I'm going to build all five, six legs of BRT. It's, I, if I were Bowman, I would have woken up this morning and thought, whoa, I, now I actually have to do this. Like now I actually have to run the city and fix it and, and do open data and do municipal sales tax and all this stuff that he talked about. Like it's, it's, <coughs> yeah, it's a mess. It's, it's just a mess. <laughs> well, the, 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 there's, there's so many things I think I could ask you guys about sort of coming out of your, out of your answer. But, uh, you know, the one thing, um, and we haven't really talked about it a whole lot, is, um, you know, one of the key campaign promises that Bowman, Brian Bowman made, of course, was uh, about getting Winnipeg's, I mean, well, really, there's sort of two things, I think, from a taxation level, right? So one thing is uh, trying to get Winnipeg's fair share of uh, PST. And the other thing is also talking about changing the taxation system. And I mean, both of those things are highly dependent on the, uh, the relationship with the province and what the what the provincial government did, uh, does. What do you think? What do you think is going to happen there in terms of the, the city provincial mayor premier relationship now that now that Ryan Bowman is uh, is now into the, the new mayor's and all? I mean, I'll just throw a quick point out on the. Uh whole tax piece there. I mean, the NDP are actually going into an coming into an election uh, campaign of their own sooner than later. I'm not sure how much they're going to want to tinker with helping Bowman or there's going to be a lot of dynamics at play here with uh, with the, sort of the conservative surge at the provincial level. They're going to be jockeying for sort of some uh, some time with dealing with some of those issues and who knows what they're going to put on the table in terms of their promises to address city issues as well that may start forth forcing the NDP to make some uh, interesting choices. So Bowman actually might be in a good spot here to really use that uh, uh, fact that the NDP are going to have their backs against the wall provincially with the, with the provincial conservatives maybe throwing out a, raising the bar with some uh, interesting stuff that uh, Bowman might be able to pick some stuff out of the NDP if he's, uh, if he's good. Yeah, that's the, the biggest dynamic here. Uh, we have a brand new mayor that started his term with a, a massive uh, mandate and a provincial government that's deeply unpopular at the very end of, of their, well, very close to the end of their mandate. So Bowman might end up getting uh, <coughs> stuff piled on his lap. He doesn't even, uh, even ask for it, and he might actually receive it. Yeah. Last question. What's next for the candidates who lost? <coughs> what happens to Judy Wash, Alicia Lee's next, where we see Gordon Steves, Robert Falk, and the lad, some of the people on council are, are, are who either ran for council and lost, or people who were incumbent councillors who lost. What, uh, what's next, do you think, for them? Will we see them you know, in future election campaigns? Or what, what do you think is going to happen there? Uh, the Liberals are already tweeting Dr. Robbie O, um, congratulating him on his victory. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure we will see him run for something else. Um, I think, yeah, and I think there's some cynicism even around his campaign that that's really what he intended. So I'm sure he, his phone is ringing off the hook this morning. Um, the rest, I, I mean, I think Gort's, it, I, it's sad to say, but I think probably his political career is over, I think. Um, and Judy was clear last night, she won't uh, run again for mayor. She didn't completely close the door on uh, another run for some other level, but I think it's highly unlikely. Um, and the rest are, are not, not important, maybe? Yes, Gina? I don't think I have any more to add to that, you know. I'm curious what Thomas Steen's going to do. Um, the Jets need uh, somebody with some goal scoring from a few decades ago. Yeah. Harvey, I hope, you know, I wish him well. I mean, again, I think, I, I hope they, they recognize some of the old faces as well, you know, that are, are changing. I think we, we owe our Harvey something uh, in this uh, changeover. I think he's been a good uh, good counselor over the years. And, uh, you know, some recognition is due. Judy, I'm sure, will... Uh, help out in the provincial election coming up, and I uh, don't think we've seen the last of her. She's a, she's a fighter. You know, the one thing about her, though, is uh, I watched her, if anybody watched her closing speech last night, I thought to myself, wow, what a passionate speech she made at the end. If she would have had that intensity in, that, in those closing words that she put on last night, in the last two weeks, we might have seen a different story. Because there was something different in, in uh, the words. I just, I just felt that uh, it was the first time I actually connected with her, thinking, wow, she's actually, she's good. And she seemed to save it for that, that final speech, not what she needed. Yeah, I think I think it was, yeah, I mean, certainly from the heart, but I also think it also wasn't the speech she was expecting to make, and, uh, and that really uh, that really showed. Maybe because she went off script, yeah. and it worked. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
Royce, what would you say? What, what's next for the candidates who, who didn't uh, who didn't make it to the council table? Well, what I want to talk about is Steve's, and I'm not sure. I might completely change my mind a week from now, so I don't hold into this. Um, the thing about Steve's, well, he says himself, he was born to run. Uh, I find it hard to believe that he's not going to ever run for public office again. Uh, I think he will. And one of the uh, the, the good outcomes of uh, this disastrous race for him might be that he has uh, actually convinced certain people, namely Conservative Party activists and members, that he actually is one of them. A conservative actually told me, uh, uh, we didn't think he was, but man, he sure sounds like one of us. Uh, so, you know, maybe he can kind of, and he's a talented politician, last night's results notwithstanding. You know, maybe he can find some way to kind of reconcile some of his other uh, skills that he has with being conservative. You don't have to have such a hard edge when you're a conservative. Uh, the kind of hard edge that he had in this campaign. So it may be that in uh, provincial politics, uh, he'll be running with the Conservatives in the future. I could potentially see that happen, but I certainly would not expect him to never run again. That would be a surprise. Well, and, and that's the thing too, I think, is you know, keep in mind, I mean, there's a provincial election coming up, and certainly a lot of those, um, I mean, he ran one set successfully in the last election, but uh, you know, some of those uh, some of those seats in South Winnipeg might look, uh, I'm sure, not just to him, but to many people, will look awfully tempting if you're a, if you're a conservative. Um, that's kind of it for sort of the uh, the main questions. I guess if if if, uh, if folks in the audience have questions that uh, you want to put to the panel, uh, please uh, please fire away.